Hello and welcome. You're watching 6 p.m. Prime. I'm Sneha Murdani. Is the pandemic over? Well, that is the question to be asked to the people on your screens right now. Take a look. These are pictures from Bangalore where a pub is seeing crowds, no masks, no social distancing whatsoever. It's the same story in poll-bound states and election rallies. Also, religious gatherings like the Mahakum and the Maha Utsav in Bulanshahar. So in which direction are we really headed with a fresh surge in cases in the country? Not in one or two states, but at least in 10 states. Are these people called covid -its? And are they driving the surge in the country? Or new variants of the infection, about 400 of them, 400 cases, are driving the surge? Who also is keeping account on reinfections in India? We discuss that up ahead on the show. So the COVID-18, whichever way you look at the situation and over almost a month now, India is reporting a big surge in COVID-19 cases. There are a handful of states driving the surge, but the concern remains with the upcoming election season also. In fact, the campaigning has already started and there are election rallies that we are seeing where there is absolutely no COVID protocol that is followed. This is a picture of India's COVID crisis. Active traces cases in the country crossing the 3 lakh market stands at 3,34,646. Deaths over 1,59,967. Recoveries are at 1 crore 11,51,468. The cases in the last 24 hours all over the country is more than 46,951. India is once again in the grip of COVID-19. The country is reporting its highest fresh cases of this year. Maharashtra is driving that surge. Even as COVID cases are on the rise, more and more COVID-8 seem to be emerging. Yes, Ma. The coronavirus has made a big comeback. India in the last 24 hours has reported over 45,000 cases, the highest this year so far. And driving the surge is Maharashtra. The state recorded 30,535 cases, nearly 70% of all fresh cases nationwide. Mumbai too broke all its pandemic records after it reported over 3,500 cases in a day. Maharashtra on Sunday saw 30,000 new cases and 99 COVID deaths, wherein Mumbai reported 3,300 cases and about 9 deaths due to COVID-19. With this increasing number of cases, the fear is rising among the citizens that once again will Mumbai face another lockdown in Mumbai. Antigen testing on random basis has also been started by the BMC. The financial capital isn't alone. Pune, Nashik, Aurangabad and Nagpur too reported their highest single-day cases on Sunday. Even as COVID cases rise, India is changing its vaccine strategy. The centre has written to states advising them to give the second dose of Covishield six to eight weeks after the first one instead of the current practice of 28 days. While many experts have made it clear that a second wave has started in the country, citizens don't seem to be bothered. There are many instances of large-scale violation of COVID protocols. In the Puland Shahar Mahotsav event in Uttar Pradesh, huge crowds gathering, maintaining absolutely zero social distancing. Hours later, newly elected Uttarakhand Chief Minister Tirat Singh Rawat said that faith will protect devotees from the virus. Now the Chief Minister himself has tested positive. What's troubling is leaders who should show the way are lax themselves. In Gujarat, a BJP MLA claimed hard-working people like his party workers won't get COVID. The election to five assemblies means thousands are flocking to election rallies in poll-bound states, flouting every possible COVID norm. With the second wave spiking, there's no room for complacency. Bureau Report, India Today. Well, there are new variants of the virus in the country as well already as has been confirmed by the Government of India. And this is data that the Government of India gives out on a regular basis. 
The UK variant first seen in the country B.1.17. The South African variant is here in India. The Brazil variant too in India. All of these variants, the infections that have been reported, the latest figure stands at 400 right now. So we have new infections with this variant, which is in fact uh, detected via genome sequencing in the country. And that too is under the radar given the fact that many experts have spoken about the fact that the kind of genome sequencing that India is doing is simply not good enough. These are the big questions. So what really is driving the surge in the country? Are COVID variants the new ones driving the surge in India? Is there COVID fatigue, complacency really behind the spike? Are there reinfections really now that are leading to an increase in cases? Also, the big question here and that everybody is suggesting that vaccination for everyone will mean that there will be herd immunity beyond a certain point in time and that really is the way forward. Joining us in the broadcast are Professor Girdhar Babu, is a professor and head of life course epidemiology at the Public Health Foundation of India. And Dr. Amrish Mittal is a chairman and head of endocrinology at Max Hospital. Thank you both for your time here. Uh, professor Girdhar Babu, I want to begin by asking you that there is a lot of confusion and the government of India has said right now it appears that there is no data to suggest that the new variants are driving the surge in the country. Is there a possibility that they are and we do not know just yet? Yeah, I think I do believe that there is a possibility and we do not know it. The reason is to establish that the variants are resulting in higher surge in cases. One, we need to identify the clusters in time. Two, we need to do the contact tracing and establish genomic sequencing, not just for the primary index case, but also for the contacts. These require a lot of uh, detailed investigations in terms of identifying how many people got from the primary case, which variant has resulted, what is the uh, infectiousness of this uh, strain, and then come to a conclusion. Currently, these things are occurring in isolation. The epidemiological investigations and the genomic sequencing will have to be done together. For example, we have National Polio Surveillance Project. Hmm. The project could tell in detail in terms of from which city, village, it traveled to which country, not just the state and the village. So therefore, we need to strengthen the surveillance where genomic surveillance and epidemiological investigations are combined together. So I do believe that there is a possibility of A, the newer strain might be uh, in circulation, two, a considerable proportion of uh, people in Mumbai are getting infected. Is there a scope for reinfection? That also we need to examine. Yes. You know, Dr. Mittal, lockdown was to improve the healthcare system in the country in terms of reading the infrastructure exactly a year ago. What purpose will a lockdown really serve if the people are not willing to listen because when the lockdown rules are relaxed, they'll just go about their normal lives like nothing has happened. Look at the pictures that we're playing out, reports from Ground Zero, where the Chief Minister of Uttarakhand says that uh, faith is going to protect the deputies there. What's really going on? I think uh, it's certainly not time for a lockdown, mm -hmm. even though purely medically someone I want to consider it, but it's not going to, I mean, it's going to be very, very hard for a general kind of lockdown. Lockdown in small places or maybe small uh, epicenters may be considered. Uh, I think uh, the issue is uh, that people have become careless. Firstly, they've been careless throughout a little bit, not the way that we would like them to be as careful. They haven't been as careful. But nevertheless, right now, there seems to be a feeling that has gone away. And there's a thing called pandemic fatigue. So people are just fed up of the whole thing of being restricted. Uh, so, so there is complete sort of freedom and people are not willing to listen. You can see that uh, in hospitals in anywhere. People are just surging. I mean, people are just coming in waves everywhere, movement is normal. You can see that in, 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 in political rallies, you can see that in religious congregations, everywhere. So I think uh, I'm not surprised. And uh, combined with that, if as, as Professor is suggesting, if there are issues of, of variants or mutants, then I think we're in for significant trouble. Uh, I think this is, uh, people are just not listening and I don't think they're getting that kind of messaging as they were getting uh, say eight months ago or six months ago. Yes. I think that has to be reiterated. You know, Professor Babu, our fatality rate continues to be at around 1.40% essentially. And it's been argued that the death rate 
is of course one among the lowest in the country, even lower than the world average, you know, in, in a way. But is that something that is, you know, getting people to uh, to just in the way in a way loosen up and and not be you know be lackadaisical, thinking that it's not an infection that is killing just so many people. So probably we've developed immunity to it, so we can just do what we want to. I think there are a lot of lessons to learn from the way Maharashtra state is handling the pandemic currently. Earlier, it was thought that it is mostly asymptomatic infections, but if you see the way the deaths are increasing the last few days, yesterday it was 99, and it is if you just compare the number of infections and this, it is slowly rising. And we should also remember that whatever the fatalities we are seeing now, it reflects the circulation ongoing probably 14 to 17 days ago, mm. which means that the actual surge in mortality might be somewhere down the line, not right now. Okay. I'm more, I'm more concerned about states which are not doing tests well, uh, Ms. Neha. The reason is, if I would not assume the COVID uh, appropriate behavior is violated only in Maharashtra or Kerala mm. and not in the other states. When we are seeing this has been the norm almost in every state and there is free movement of people from one state to another, I'll be really concerned if the states are not picking up the transmission early on and thereby result in large uh, outbreaks later. Okay. Also, the election season is here and we just don't have these people who are in pubs or religious gatherings, but we also see Netas uh, campaigning, the manner in which all of this is being done with COVID protocol being thrown out of the window. What messaging, what is the kind of messaging here when the political leaders are doing this? Dr. Mittal. No, I think the messaging, uh, uh, by and large, was very strong. I mean, earlier uh, on, on, on the telephone, you know, you, you couldn't dial yes. a number without listening to a message from a film star or something. So I think that kind of messaging Thing has to go out again, has to be reinforced very strongly. And in India, as in many populations, some kind of penalty system has to be in place again. It's probably still there on paper, but not being enforced strictly. Hmm. And on top of that, the vaccination thing has to be really, really encouraged now. Yes. We, we cannot, you know, we just have to vaccinate as many people as we can in the hope that the vaccine will reduce not only the spread and the seriousness of the earlier uh, virus, original form, but probably also help against some of the mutants. Yes. So I think we have to attack on all fronts right away. You know, Professor Baba, I was in fact wanting to come to you on that also. Right now, the strategy seems to be, you know, the vaccines are very thinly spread. One argument is that get more and more people vaccinated and one of the decisions taken today, you know, increasing the gap really is going to ensure that more doses, the first doses are given out quickly in a way. Opening up the age categories and also focusing high target districts. Does the vaccination strategy in the country require a great deal of tweaking? Yeah, a great deal of tweaking is absolutely necessary because uh, once we cover more than 60 years old, we need to focus on the other age groups in incremental manner and ensure that most people with comorbidities are covered in the next few months. If Kerala and Maharashtra sort of gave an indication of how it is going to spread in other states, we need to make sure that the vulnerable in all the states are covered first. I definitely believe that the vulnerable people have to be covered much faster hmm. than the younger age groups, mainly uh, because vaccine is nearly 100% effective in preventing all the deaths and the severe illness. Although it cannot prevent spread of infection, I think this is the need of our, and this is why the vaccines are so useful at this juncture. All right. Uh, Professor Babu, also Dr. Mittal, thank you for joining us uh, with your perspective on that important story. We are clearly not losing sight of because the total number of cases in the country has also now started to go up. It's beyond the 45,000 mark now. Of course, Maharashtra is accounting for close to 60% of the total cases that we are reporting. For the moment, it's time for a quick break. Much more news. In Hi everyone, Preeti Chaudhary here. Hope you like this video. For latest news and analysis, like and subscribe to the India Today YouTube channel. And don't forget to press the bell icon to stay updated. Thank you for watching.